Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today I have a Dell, and this Dell heralds from the XPS line. Now, the example that we have here in front of us today is the XPS 13 9370. All right, so I'm going to interrupt myself. This is becoming a bit of a trend. So the machine that I just introduced to you is the 9370 is in fact not the 9370. How did I come to the conclusion that I thought it was? Well, I read the service tag that was under the little trap door and that's what it came back to on Dell's website. Uh, however, that is 100% incorrect. The trap door should have been an indicator to me that it wasn't the right model because the 9370 does not have the trap door anymore. In fact, it uh, was a brand new inclusion. The second thing was that the service documentation didn't list 7th gen Intel. Now, that wasn't really a good indicator because I've seen Dell's documentation be spotty before. The one thing that I did kind of stop and go, huh, was the port diagram wasn't right. Uh, there was one additional Thunderbolt port that I did not have on the unit in front of me. And it wasn't until I booted it up and found out it was 7th gen Intel, which you'll see in the video, um, that I have now come to the conclusion that I don't actually know what happened. <laughs> because like I didn't enter the service tag incorrectly and it came back with that machine and it's not that machine. Now, I sincerely doubt that this is a case of where like the bottom cover was swapped because the trap door matches that generation of unit. It's almost like there was an error in either Dell's database retrieving the model or they reused the service tag or the service tag, which is less likely, was transponded from one device to another. I have incorrectly referred to this device throughout the video as a 9370, which it is not. It is a 9360. So periodically throughout the video, I am going to have to just interject and be like 9360 uh, to correct myself. So back to the video which is not to be confused with the 7390, which looks like this. Don't confuse the two. They are different in a few places, but we're not here to talk about this one today. We are here to talk about this one. So this 9360 was released in the year of 2018, and it is a pretty classic example of what the XPS line would be known for, which is a black carbon fiber-like interior that's soft to the touch with these very attractive uh, aluminum panels on the top and the bottom. It always reminded me as if you put a ThinkPad X1 Carbon in between two MacBooks, you would get uh, what the XPS is. Now it is sporting a 13.3 inch display and this particular model comes in two major flavors, a 1920 by 1080 touch or non-touch and then of course the 3840 by 2160 touch panel which is also known as the infinity edge display. CPUs in this were 8th generation i5 or i7. I could not find a complete list on Dell's website and that's actually kind of normal. RAM was either 4, 8, or 16 gigabytes of low power DDR3 1866 or 2133 megahertz and that is soldered to the board. And on the inside we have an M.2 2280 NVMe style drive along with a 4 cell 52 watt hour battery. So we have a pretty darn good keyboard, all things considered protruding through the top case, and a very responsive click pad, even up to the almost upper edges, which is really nice to see. And there's a small faded line there that you can see that kind of denotes left and right click spaces, which is really nice. This unfortunately does suffer from the nose cam that is low and off to the side here. On newer models, they did fix that by putting the webcam where it's supposed to be. I have always found this to be a bit of a deal breaker, especially with a 720p resolution. In the year 2022, that really starts to show its age. One thing I want to point out, and maybe some of those people in the audience that use Dells a lot more than I do, is that a lot of the XPS lines that I have seen have this weird phenomenon where if you push on them, they creak. And this happens to the other one as well. Not too sure why. Well, let's do a quick tour of the ports and the features. 
On the front here, there is a tiny light, which is used to indicate whether or not the machine is plugged in and or charging. On the left-hand side, we have a traditional barrel plug. We have one of the USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports that are available. We have a USB A 3.1 Gen 2. We have a headphone microphone combo jack, and then we have this button here, which when pressed denotes the battery life. So each one of those lights is 20%. And then we have one of our speakers over here. Along the back, we have absolutely nothing. And then on this side here, we have a Kensington lock slot, another USB style A port, a full sized card slot, and then the other speaker. It is worth pointing out that these USB type C ports, I believe are Thunderbolt 3 compliant. And then moving to the bottom, we have the very iconic trap door that we open up and it has all of the information of the machine, the service tag, and all of that other good stuff hiding out underneath. If we want to disassemble this machine, we will need a special screwdriver. Some of these look like Torx. And this is a, so that is Torx T5 to get into here. But I know that the other one that I was showing earlier in the video has a different pentalobe uh, style entry point. So either they change the screws because Dell is being Dell and doesn't want you opening the machine for whatever reason or sees this as some kind of security feature rather than an inconvenience. And oddly enough, that is not a torque screw. That is just a standard Phillips. And with all of those off, it should just be a simple matter of lifting up on the case just that tiny bit. All right. So now that we've busted into this thing using two completely separate uh, screws and screwdrivers, we can go ahead and see uh, a few different things. So interestingly enough, even though I went through and I read the specifications, this is a 60 watt hour battery, but the one that I was reading about is supposed to be 52 watt hour. So I don't know. We do have our full sized M.2 NVMe drive here. And then of course we have our Wi-Fi card over here. And then we have a little sticker here covering what would be a WAN port. And if we lift that up ever so gently, we will see that there's absolutely nothing here. So we have a fan kicking out exhaust from the back, drawing in air from the bottom. And I find this a bit interesting because there's your air intake grill, your fans over here, so a lot of this from here to here is just being cooled by natural air circulation where this is your forced air essentially. We can see our two uh, kind of side firing speaker chambers there and appears to be a small coin cell CMOS battery hanging out over here on the edge. But overall, there really isn't a whole lot to look at on the inside of this machine because everything else is soldered probably to the reverse side of the board because I don't see a nice neat row of RAM chips staring me in the face. So as you can see, there's not a whole lot that you're really going to be able to do on the inside of this. Maybe replace the SSD, change out the battery, but everything else is uh, kind of soldered into place. So let's put it all back together and see what we get for boot times and performance. All right, with all of the screws back into place, let's open this thing up and see what we get for boot times and performance. Not great, but not terrible. I'm not entirely sure why this particular unit seems to be getting hung up on the Windows welcome screen, but it is, and it's doing it consistently. So the XPS 13 9360 ranges a fair bit in price, as low as 400 Canadian dollars and up. Uh, there are some auctions out there where you can get them a little lower though. So they are a pretty good option for a used eighth generation 
Intel laptop. The build quality is pretty good. The use of proprietary screws or security screws on the bottom, depending on the model, does mean that you are buying a tool that's not a standard screwdriver that you might have lying around the house. And parts inside are somewhat limited, as you would expect with an Ultrabook of this size. I do have to compliment them on port selection, though. A full-size SD card reader, two USB-A ports, a uh, Thunderbolt 3 port. You know, that's a good combination to have on a device like this, so I have to give them props to that. I'm not a huge fan of the overall aesthetic, um, you know, but I certainly cannot flaw a good overall device when I see it, and that is definitely what we have here. The display here is the standard 1920 by 1080. It's not a touch, it's not the 4K, but I have to say it looks really, really good. And in terms of the other specifications here, it is running eight gigs of RAM, and this is the Core i5 seventh generation CPU. So that does mean that we are not going to be natively running Windows 11 on this. So if that does matter to you, uh, then that is something that you will need to take into consideration. And that is just one of the challenges um, with purchasing Dell sometimes, is uh, the documentation could be a little bit better in terms of what you can expect in terms of configurations. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this content, and if you did, I would encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, so the next time I feature Adele on the channel, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.